Magician and overall, nobody asked you to do that stunt artist, David Blaine recently made headlines when he used balloons to lift himself nearly five miles above the Arizona desert before skydiving back down to Earth. Sure, that's a daring and cool stunt, I suppose, but people comparing it to the movie Up are getting a little carried away, if you ask me. I mean, if he really wanted to do the Up trick properly, he would have landed from that skydive and then revealed that he had a Boy Scout with him the entire time. Now that is a trick. Hello Internet, welcome to Film Theory, the show that helps your knowledge of movies and TV soar to new heights before bursting your balloons by ruining your favorite franchises. I can't help it. I'm like life's pointy little needle of sadness. Let's ignore that ominous foreshadowing for a moment, though, and consider the majesty of Pixar. With almost no new movies coming out in 2020, I've had a fantastic opportunity to revisit some old classics. No, not the bygone classics from the golden age of film, or underappreciated futuristic anime, or even obscure French documentaries about potato picking, Ah, les glaneurs et la glanus, you will always remain in my Watch Later playlist. Nope, I've been watching old Pixar movies. Haven't exactly kept my love of Pixar a secret on this channel, but sometimes it can be tricky to talk about their movies. I've actually wanted to make a theory about Up for a long time, but every time I start to watch the movie, I get so dehydrated from weeping after that first 10 minutes that I have to stop. If you've never made it past those first 10 minutes either, let me spoiler alert summarize the movie so we can get on with today's theory, shall we? In Up, an old man named Carl uses balloons to fly his and his late wife's house to their dream adventure destination of Paradise Falls in South America, along with an annoying Boy Scout and a talking dog. Wow, it is a remarkably easy movie to summarize. Now, the obvious theory about Up is about whether you can actually make a house fly with balloons. And while a number of videos have attempted to answer this, even going so far as to build a miniature of Carl's house and fly it, I've never been satisfied with the answer, or the methodology, or the math that's been used, and I've also been left unsatisfied when everyone fails to answer the other obvious question here, even if you do manage to get the house in the air, is there any chance that it could possibly make it to another continent? I guess when you want something done right, you have to do it yourself. And that, my friends, is the plan for today's theory. So my friends, strap in like David Blaine, because today we're going up, up, and away. The first question that we have to dig into is the obvious one. Whether Carl could actually have floated his house using balloons as we see in the movie. And I recognize that I am far from the first person to actually try to answer this. David Blaine demonstrated that you can do it with a person person, and the National Geographic show How Hard Can It Be proved that you could do it with a house. So I gotta say, the house that they built was more of a house-shaped box than something that people could actually live in, which is gonna come with a lot of stuff that's gonna weigh the whole project down. The theoretical physics behind it isn't all that complicated. Since helium is lighter than air, a balloon creates a small lifting force. And if you get enough helium in enough balloons, yeah, you could theoretically lift anything. A house, a yacht, even the Statue of Liberty. The real question is how many balloons you'd need need, and that one requires a bit more work. I've seen estimates of this figure online ranging from Wired's claim that the job would be done in about 100,000 balloons, to the director of Up, Pete Docter, saying that the figure they arrived at was somewhere in the vicinity of 23 and a half million balloons. A bit of a difference. There's a, you know, margin of error. Nice try there, guys, but here on Film Theory, you only get partial credit if you don't show your work. So I wanted to do the math for myself, along with a bit of testing from our pal Austin over on the Science on Game Theory. First question how much does Carl's house weigh? There are actually a lot of considerations depending on the materials that you use to make the house, but generally speaking, older houses are made from heavier materials. Carl and Ellie renovate a house known as a Queen Anne style house, which are what you'd think of as your classic Victorian houses. Think high-pitched roofs, tower structures or bay windows, and porches with ornate lattice work called gingerbread trim. We can also see that Carl's house has a heavy slate roof. That's why you're getting that scalloped pattern up there on the top of the building. Building. This house was probably built in the early 20th century at the latest, given that it was falling apart when Carl and Ellie meet in it in 1939. According to one construction company, a good estimate for the weight of a two-story house like Carl's is 275 pounds per square foot, though we have to subtract the weight of the house's foundation from that because when the house lifts up, you don't see the foundation coming with it. Luckily, the up house now exists. A replica was actually built in the suburbs of Salt Lake City, Utah, and covers 2,800 square feet. So even if we imagine it 
continent having a heavy foundation of 200,000 pounds or 91,000 kilograms, we've still got ourselves a weight of 570,000 pounds, 260,000 kilograms that we need to lift using nothing but balloons. So as you can imagine, we're gonna need a lot of balloons. So that leads us to our second question. How much weight can a helium balloon lift? Obviously, this question depends on the kind of balloon. Both Mr. Street Magic and the people of National Geographic opted for big meteorological balloons. But if we want to recreate up, we're talking about latex, party city, rub it on your head and stick it to the wall kind of balloons. On average, one of these balloons can fit about 9 liters of helium in it, which should have the ability to lift about 11 grams of mass. We also have to start subtracting the weight of the non-house things that the helium is also lifting. The balloon itself weighs about 2 grams. And if we imagine Carl using very thin fishing line for the strings, which I chose because the ribbon that you get on party balloons would actually be too heavy at the lengths that Carl needs, that's going to add about another 0.7 grams for a 50 foot length of string. Thus, each balloon has the ability to lift about 8.3 grams if we're not accounting for any other outward forces like the friction of the balloons rubbing together. Converting the total weight of the house from 570,000 pounds to about 258,547,651 grams, we get that Carl is going to need a grand total of 31 million 150,319 balloons to get that house off the ground. Having trouble envisioning what that number of balloons would look like? Well, here's some footage from Balloon Fest, which happened in Cleveland, Ohio, just a couple of miles from where I was born, two months from before I was born, in September of 1986, in an attempt to break the Guinness World Record for the most balloons released at one time. What you're seeing in that news coverage right there is one and a half million helium balloons. So Carl's house would need that times 20, probably blocking out the sun in the process. Also, did Cleveland's balloon fest have as nice of an ending as up? Nope. Guinness refused to recognize it as a world record and the balloons hampered a search and rescue mission for two lost fishermen who wound up dead. Classic Cleveland pulling a Cleveland. It's not funny that people died at all. It's just such a Cleveland move. Ah, oh, I love you guys. We originated the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and the ability to set rivers on fire because they're so polluted. I'm originally from Cleveland, so I'm allowed to make that joke, but Cleveland is like the double Baltic of cities. I love you, Cleveland, so much. Okay, so theoretically, you can lift your house into the sky if you have 30 million spare balloons lying around, but that still doesn't confirm the events of the film because we have to answer our other major question here. Could Carl really fly the house to Paradise Falls? Unfortunately, when you have 30 million balloons attached to your house, shower curtain isn't gonna be super effective at steering it. It's like trying to steer your car by sticking your arm out the window. So Carl is gonna be at the mercy of wind patterns, but there is some indication that the wind might actually end up blowing Carl's house toward Paradise Falls. Paradise Falls as a location doesn't really exist in real life, but it's based on Venezuela's Angel Falls, the tallest waterfall in the world. It's unclear where in the United States Carl is from, but from anywhere in the lower 48, he's gonna be needing to be blown south and east, landing somewhere near the equator. The eastern direction for weather is pretty typical. North of 30 degrees latitude, which is pretty much all of America, the predominant wind pattern is the subtropical jet stream, which blows from west to east opposite the direction that the Earth is spinning. In order to go south, the house needs to get caught up in what's called a Hadley cell, which is a rotating mass of air that occurs between the equator and about 30 degrees latitude. Air from the equator heats up, rises high in the atmosphere, and moves towards the poles, at which point the air cools down, sinks, and moves back toward the equator. It's certainly lucky for Carl's house to end up around Paradise Falls, but when you look at the weather pattern, it's not impossible. And if you think it's impossible for helium balloons to travel that kind of distance, there's actually anecdotal evidence to suggest otherwise. In 2013, a British student released helium balloons with letters attached to them into the sky, only to have one recovered in Australia over 10,000 miles away. So who knows? Maybe that thunderstorm in the movie blew Carl's house right into the Hadley cell it needed to land it right at Paradise's Falls' feet should have just stuck with what the script said in that moment instead of trying to spin it off into what I thought I was gonna say, and then it didn't make a whole lot of sense because waterfalls don't have feet, and he doesn't wind up at the feet of the falls, he winds up at the top of the falls. It's stupid! It was a stupid attempt at ad-libbing. So, yes, you can lift a house with balloons, and those balloons can fly halfway across the world. Does that mean that Carl's planning up is actually kinda, when you squint at it, plausible? Well, 
there's one final teensy tiny little problem. You know what's really gonna stand in Carl's way beyond depleting the world's supply of latex and helium and having to get tremendously lucky with weather patterns? The cost. See, we know from Carl and Ellie's montage at the beginning of the movie that they're not exactly rolling in the dough. They have to break that jug of change over and over and over again to make ends meet, and even just thinking about it's getting me to tear up. Suck it up, Matt, you have to talk about brutal cold science. But it's not like either of them is sitting on a trust fund, and uh, buying and filling up that many balloons is gonna get a little expensive. Helium costs roughly $119 per thousand cubic feet. Best price I can find on balloons works out to be a little less than five cents per balloon, not to mention the fact that we're gonna be needing almost 300,000 miles of fishing line to hold all of them together. When you crunch all of those numbers, the cost for the 280 million liters of helium that you need is 1,178,170 bucks. The balloons themselves are gonna cost you 1.5 million bucks, and the fishing line ends up running you $2,388,191 for a grand total cost of $5,108,302. You can't put a price on a meaningful romantic gesture, but if it costs you $5.1 million, maybe look into buying some nearby real estate instead. And before any of my billionaire viewers out there get the idea that they could just do this themselves, consider the following. If it takes you 10 seconds to blow up and tie each of those balloons, you'd need to spend almost 10 years non-stop inflating balloons to pull off the stunt. Sorry to burst your balloon. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And if you enjoyed this episode, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We just crossed the amazing milestone of 9 million subscribers, and we're 1 million away from getting that diamond play button. Guys, it would validate this channel so much. So please, if you're not subscribed, consider hitting that subscribe button. It doesn't really do a whole lot to change how you engage with YouTube in general, so help out the channel at no cost to yourself. And honestly, if you enjoyed this video, we got tons more like it on the channel, and we got a lot more coming down the way to wind up 2020. So the year might suck, but hopefully these videos make you feel a little bit happier, give you a little bit of a distraction, help remind you of movies that are out, and might make you feel a little bit better about life. So hit the subscribe button. We're here for you. We appreciate it when you're here for us. I'll see you all next week.